What's up? Today I'm going to be telling you how to use Tablet 2. Hit like and subscribe! Anyways, in this video I'm going to show you how you can use Doubler 2.0 to use your mouth to make MIDI and drums using any microphone that you have at home. Now I have made a video on Voclia Doubler Kit 1.0 which comes with a microphone and there I focused a little bit on drums, making lo-fi hip-hop, all at once while I'm playing keys and using my mouth to do the beats. So in this video, I'm going to focus a little bit more on chord progressions and melody. Also, really big thank you and shout out to Voclia for sponsoring this video and for releasing Doublet 2. I think my little bird Chips also has something to say. Hey, hey Chips. Chips, something to say, my boy? Okay, he walked away from the microphone. But if he knew that his voice could be turned into MIDI, he wouldn't be doing that. I'm not going to do a, a huge setup video, this is more about some ideas. So first of all, once you get Doubler 2 and you've installed it, this is what it'll look like. Actually, you won't have this basic profile. I made this profile. So we could just create a new profile. And this is what you'll see. You have your play, train, key, chord, and assign. So basically, if you want to assign any of these parameters to something in Ableton, you go to the assign knob. If you want to use your voice to make chords, you go to chords. If you want to sing a specific note and have your voice snap to a specific key, you do those settings in here. Training is to train your drum triggers. And again, you can check out this video on Double One how to do that. And play. Play is just having fun. Double Two will ask you to calibrate your microphone so that you get the best out of your microphone. They recommend using a dynamic microphone and an external audio interface. Basically, the more precise the audio you're sending to Double Two, the more precise the results are going to be. Don't try and use a built-in computer microphone. I mean, you'll you'll just get bad results mainly because your computer microphone is going to be picking up sounds in the room and converting those too. So let's just keep it clean, shall we? Uh, during this calibration, just sing these notes. Oh. Great. Fun times. Ooh. If you want to hear the results here, you can also just go output device. None. I set it to none because I'm going to be hearing all of this through Ableton. But we can also do this. <laughs> so, it's kind of cool talking like this, but it's probably very distracting. So I'm just going to set this to none. Cool. Now, this is a standalone device, so you must not close it. Don't click, don't click X. The reason this is kind of different to what you might expect is that usually if you're operating in a door and you only have one screen, like I do, then if you put in a plugin and I open the plugin window and I'm done with it. I need to hit this X to make this window go away. But the plugin is still open. But in Doubler 2, because it's a standalone application and it needs to stay open, you need to train yourself not to hit X. Just click on Ableton. So top tip, if it keeps randomly crashing or closing, it's probably because you're closing it and not realizing what you're doing. Or maybe that's just me. So I've pulled on a drum loop here because we'll be focusing on melody and chords. This is what it sounds like. And we might as well use Addictive Keys here, a piano, to demo some chords. So this is a plugin, you can use any MIDI instrument. And the way you set it up in Ableton is make sure it's a MIDI track, then under all ends, I just like to hit double 2. If you don't see that, hit Command Comma to open your preferences. Go to MIDI and then at these MIDI ports, make sure you can see doubler and make sure track and remote are checked and then record enable it and then all of a sudden the magic happens now if you want any setting to change as in you want the pitches to snap to a certain key you need to do that in here so i can go to key i can say i only want notes from the b locrian scale um or even blues scale That's cool, that's cool. Oh, and also you can have pitch bend. Ooh. And 
I'm going to assign some knobs. Wow, 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 wow. So what I've done here on my master track, I've put an auto filter and I have assigned <laughs> the frequency over here to my A and my O. So if you hit command M, you can see here that I have MIDI mapped. Whoa. Ooh, ooh. Oh, wow, 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 wow. But I also want to, I want to do a chord progression first. Do, 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 Cool, so I'm just going to quantize everything and clean it up a bit. See, this is so cool, this little... I wouldn't have thought of that myself, but sometimes these little like changes that the voice makes can translate into some interesting chords. Also, that's a bit high for me, so I'm going to bring it down an octave. And I'm also going to take this note, transpose it up an octave, this note. So always the second note from the top here, I'm just transposing up an octave. Because I just want some wider spacing in the chords. Um, boom, boom, boom. I want like a plucky instrument. Actually, I'm gonna use massive. Change to key. Um, gonna change my envelope. Add some reverb. I want to make this release time modulate based on maybe the vowels that I'm using. So I'm going to open this plugin over here, hit configure, click release. So now I've got release over here and then unclick configure. Now I can hit this X button. Open doubler um, and then we go to assign and uh, ooh, ooh. I think perhaps the, I think I'm going to take the envelope. That'll be the volume. So if I have a very loud note, I want the release to be long. So I'm going to map, come on MIDI, hit this. Ooh, the louder my note, the longer the release time. La, 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 la. Great. La, la, la. I'm just gonna keep singing. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> could do a bass, although I'm just gonna like super cheap trick. I'm going to delete all the top notes of these chords and then just take that down an octave and put that on a different instrument like operator. That'll be fine. It's a bit too low actually. I actually just want this change. So yeah, I mean, that was just out of the top of my head randomly singing and this was snapping it to blues notes so it all fits together so that's one idea and then in the master channel I can actually open this auto filter now and record some automation what is my ho ha hoo? automation I don't like it though so I'm just gonna come on and do just take that away and this is all my release automation from increasing the volume of my notes 
you'll actually see that in my MIDI velocity. So every time this velocity actually goes up, the release time also goes up. So that's one way you can just bust out a quick idea. And one thing I often tell people that I coach is have fun, play around, but like not all ideas are going to work. So if this is just not for you, that's fine. Play it, delete it. You don't have to hold on to everything you create. But the cool thing about this, it can just get you stuck in. Often we struggle to start and like it's so easy for me to just go bah, 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 and then I'm like, oh, now I have notes to work from. I've got something to work from. Okay, for this next idea, I'm going to take Dabla. I'm actually going to pretty much take off the key restrictions. So I'm going to set it to chromatic. Whoa, I almost hit X. So what that means is like, oh, I can do anything. That's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with a plucky one. Let's just record something. Anything. Actually like this. I don't know, let's, uh, let's just bust some chords over it. I'm really not thinking about this, you know? You just go for it. Um, 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 which key are we in here? Um, oh, F sharp minor. F sharp minor, F sharp minor. It's super easy to pick and choose what you liked and change your instruments and turn it into something that you're proud of. I mean, another scenario could be where you actually have a melody. Like, what do we do with that? So that's a quite a prominent note. Again. Bum. Let's check the key. G minor. So it's got a key. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. No, I'm going to arpeggiate this. Uh, I just want to do like chords. Da, 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 da. This is as loud. Cool, well, actually, I said I wasn't going to do drums, but I'm doing drums. So, back to Dabla. Let's go to Train. Boom. That's my kick. Well, it's more of a hi-hat, but it's fine. Let's add a drum rack. Make sure it's set to Dabla. So I click play and we're sorted. Maybe I'll move this hat here. Um, and if we want to add a bass, we could. Ooh. Um.
So those are a couple of ways that you can use Dublin 2 Studio to add some new ideas or some flavor to your music, make chord progressions really easily, find bass lines, and um, even make drums if you want. There's some really cool videos online about how to use these parameters to be creative in your automation, especially in live performance. If you don't have enough fingers, oh, then um, you know it could be really helpful. If you want to get Dubla 2, there is an affiliate link in the description. I'd love it if you use it. I get a tiny little portion. And let me know what you guys create. Feel free to tag me on Instagram if you use this. And of course, tag Voclia. They love to see how people use their products, especially if you have new ideas. And um, yeah, hope this was helpful. Leave a like. Okay, bye.